And now, for fans of the most exciting sport in the world, the MMA Live Chat Hour. Listen up and find out what's happening in the world of MMA. Welcome to the MMA Live Chat Hour. I'm Rich Davey, and it's Saturday, December 7th, 2013, the day after the UFC Fight Night 33 Hunt vs. Bigfoot event. Joining us on the show today are yours truly, Ired Merck, and Gregory Sanchez. On today's show, we'll be discussing the UFC Fight Night 33 Hunt vs. Bigfoot event results, our predictions for the fights that took place last night, the of the night bonuses, and we'll probably go off topic as well in the final thoughts segment. Thanks for taking part on the show, guys. Go ahead and say hello. What's up, guys? If you want to carry on listening to me talk about fucking gaming and MMA, you can just follow me on Twitter at Hired underscore Merck. Hey, what's up, everyone? My name's Greg. Uh, same here. If you want uh, follow back, follow me on uh, at Twitter, at uh, <laughs> Sugar Pooper. <laughs> Do you follow him back? <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for uh, being here again. Uh, let's uh, quickly recap the scoring system for those who haven't uh, heard how we do that. Um, if you pick the correct fighter but don't get the correct method or round, you earn four points. If you pick the correct fighter method or the correct fighter and round, you earn seven points. If you pick the correct fighter, round, and method, or correctly call the winner by decision, you earn 10 points. In the UFC Fight Night 33 event, there were 11 bouts to predict, with a potential of 110 points for a perfect set of picks. All right, guys, so the winners of that event last night was, uh, congrats to Alex. He was in first place with 7-4 and four with 47 points out of 110. Then hired Merck, 6-5 with 45 out of 110. And then Rich Davey and Gregory Sanchez tied with 5 and 6 with 35 points each. Um, after both um, sets of predictions that we made, we have Rich in first place, 12 and 9 with 84 out of 210. Merck in second, 12 and 9 with 81 points out of 210. Alex, 7 and 4 with 47 points out of 110. Lou, 8 and 2 with 44 out of 100. And Gregory Sanchez, 5-6 and six with 35 out of 110. Wow, that was a mouthful, guys. Any comments on that? That was a huge introduction there. That was. <laughs> and it all sounds just about right. <laughs> okay, so but, um, let's jump right into things. Uh, Fight Night 33, Hunt versus Bigfoot event. Um, comments, fellas? That was a very good event overall, in my opinion. I mean, prelims I didn't really care that much for. But the main card was pretty solid and pretty good. Especially that main event. Holy fuck, that main event. That was yeah, easily, I agree. Yeah, easily the best heavyweight fight I've seen like, in terms of entertainment. That was, oh, it was so amazing. Yeah, that was a great fight. Um, kind of disappointing, though, that there was actually no winner. Because that would have been nice. Because now it goes down in uh, UFC history as probably one of the best heavy weight fights of all time, and uh, unfortunately, it was a draw. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of sucks, I suppose, but in all honesty, I don't care. I, like, I think I the think, majority... Yeah, of I think because of the, the performances, yeah. Yeah. So, destined for a rematch in that one, huh? I think they're good. They're both going to get uh, really good fights coming up because of just uh, the way they slugged it out, and... Yeah, I was, yeah, I was kind of surprised that Mark Hunt lasted as long, and then he had a little bit of a resurgence in the fifth round. How did you guys um, score the fight, by the way? Um, I scored it for Mark Hunt, 48-47. I gave uh, one round to Bigfoot, and I would say four rounds to Hunt. Wow. I didn't see it that way at all. I saw it the other way. I had uh, uh, Silva winning by one round. It was a close fight, though. How did you guys oh, yeah. score the fifth round? Because that seemed to be the hinge pin. On what I mean, I Hunt essentially outgrappled Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird. That's a weird <laughs> sentence. Mark Hunt out grappling someone. Bigfoot, yeah. That? Yeah, that's that wasn't in the fifth round though, crazy. was it? Um That was the third. Third. Yeah. yeah. 
The but fifth how did you guys score the fifth? School. Because that was the hinge pin on the fight. That's I the round the f- that gave us the majority draw, according to the official yeah. judges' the score. Two, the two ten eights. Yeah, there were two ten eights by two of the judges, which I didn't see an argument for that. I had a ten nine hunt, but ten eight man, um, that's stretching it. I, I scored it for Mark Hunt, for Mark Hunt ten nine, and this whole ten eight bullshit. People just like, oh, we need more ten eight rounds. We need more ten eight rounds. No, we don't. Shut the fuck up. We don't need more ten eight rounds. Yeah, we so, seriously so do not you didn't need see that more ten eight rounds either, then, right? No, th- that wasn't a ten eight round to me. I mean, Bigfoot. It didn't. I guess he didn't really do much in that round, but it wasn't like he well, was getting. One of them really did much in that round because they were both exactly. pretty much spent so, fourth. 10-8 round, I think, is stupid. We don't need a lot more 10-8 rounds. Otherwise, more draws will happen, and fans will, again, bitch about that. It's a stupid system. That, well, it's that... kind of ridiculous, because they're saying a lot more happened in that round. When I don't know, man. Did, did it look to you guys like a lot more happened in that round? No. <laughs> well, from what I remember, uh, Hunt gets him hurt like around the beginning of the fifth, but then uh, Bigfoot recovers, so I wouldn't... I wouldn't score the 10-8 personally. Yeah, it just didn't the... seem like there was that much action because, man, they were both pretty much spent and just flinging arms out there. You know, they're arm punches for the most point. Yeah. I, I, think I do that's... remember thinking, like, Hunt won this round because, like, both were gassed, but Bigfoot was, like, more drained, it seemed. Yeah, I had Hunt winning they... the final round, too, but definitely not 10-8. The only 10-8 I, I can legitimately say that it should have been was the Frankie Edgar and uh, Gray Maynard, uh, their second fight. I, the first round of that, I believe that's a 10 8. Mark Hunt versus Antonio Silva, round 5, that's not a 10 8. Yeah. So what happens from here now? It looks like both of those guys are, like uh, Sugar was saying, they're going to move up and get a better contender. Well, uh, yeah, they're Silva's both going to. He's kind of fucked when it comes to the heavyweight division at the moment because the champions came Velasquez. He's lost twice to him. So if, if he wants to get a title shot, you'll probably have to they like might, five. They might have to fight JDS. <laughs> yeah, he, he needs to get like five or six wins, something like that, to get it, which is going to be quite hard for him. And he can't cut to light heavyweight because he's a fucking giant. So he can't do that. And then Mark Hunt, um, I don't really see him getting Junior Dos Santos or a title shot anytime soon because, I don't know, for some reason he just didn't really want to give him a title shot unless he beat Dos Santos, which we saw isn't going to happen. So I guess a rematch? I mean, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, that's what they're saying. I mean, that's the rumor that I'm hearing out there on the interweb. Three-rounder? No, we need a five-rounder again, I think. <laughs> Co-main event, five-rounder? Um, I'd want it to be main event again. Yeah? Yeah, that, that was... That yeah, was they fun. can make it a main event on a fight night. They have so many coming up anyways. Yeah, they have like... They have, like, what, nearly 20 fight nights a year, like, on Fox, and... They're what? scheduled for 54 events next year, supposedly. Yeah, and I bet at least 20 of them are free yeah. cards, so... Any more comments on this one, guys? Um, I would say fight of the year. Yeah, I, 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 I have yeah. that one up for contender for fight of the year, no doubt. Um, I'm torn between that and Melendez vs. Sanchez, but I'm going to give it to this one because Mark Hunt is in it, and I love Mark Hunt. <laughs> what about you, Sugar? Yeah, I'd say, like, this has to be, like, one of the best heavyweight fights I've seen since, like, uh, Kane and JDS 2, yeah. you know? Yeah, I'm not a big and, Mark Hunt fan. I, I find him to be a little sloppy in the way he just wings punches randomly and wildly, but surprised me. I didn't think he was going to be able to hang in there that long throwing shit like that, and then in the fifth round, yeah, I... Definitely gave him the fifth round, but... Yeah, um, one thing I want to say before we do move on, though, the resurgence of Mark Hunt, I think, is the, the most beautiful thing we've seen in MMA recently. I mean, he started off, Dana just wanted to buy him out of the contract, didn't really want him in the UFC, and Mark Hunt was like, no, I'm a fighter, I will fight those fights, and you can cut me if you want, if I don't win. And then he debuted, lost, then from there he was like, all right, I gotta get serious won four straight, and now he's... Oh, he just looks so good. And he out-grappled a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. So... And he I looks just, more fit than ever. Yeah, it's... I think it's truly a beautiful story, to be honest. And he's got a hell of a chin. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Okay, so recapping that one, that fight was declared a majority draw. 48-47 hunt, 47-47, and 47-47. All right, uh, fight number two, Mauricia Shogun Hua versus James Tahuna. Comments on that, guys? Um, Shogun, I, I figured Shogun would win, because I guess I'm not really the biggest fan of James Tahuna. Everyone's just like, oh, he, he's, he came in holding his hands down, he was underestimating Shogun. No, he usually does that. I mean, that's just how Tahuna fights. Yeah, I, I remember that. Well, that's fucking he dumb. Yeah, he like, fights he like fight. that's dumb. Yeah. Well, that's twice I, I picked James Tahuna to win, and both times I picked him, he let me down, so I ain't picking <laughs> so him anymore. So you're not a fan anymore. <laughs> so you're no longer a fan. No longer a fan. He screwed me <laughs> twice now. <laughs> but, um, yeah, he's a, I mean, I'm not saying he's a bad fighter, but his best win has been Ryan Jimmo. That's not good, really, in the light heavyweight division, considering you've got guys like Glover Tessera, Shogun, John Jones, Alexander Gustafson. I mean, shit. <laughs> but how about that fucking knockout punch, huh? Boom, he lands that. It was a lefty. Oh, right? yeah, that was beautiful. Beautiful. He landed a left oh, right yeah. on the jaw. Boom. And beautiful. Was... Fucking collapsed Tahuna like a brick wall. He went down, man. That was incredible. Yeah, it was. It was very, very awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, he, he had a lot of doubters coming into this one. People were saying like he was on his way out. I was thinking almost, but I picked him. I, I, I wanted to remain like I knew this guy wasn't done. Like, the, like remember his fight with Dan Henderson? That wasn't that long ago, you know. Gustafson couldn't even finish him, you know. Like he, he's a good fucking fighter. Yeah, yeah, Shogun's yeah, uh, he's still a good fight. He's not Pride Shogun, but then Pride Shogun had different competition with the likes of uh, Kevin Randleman and Mark Coleman. They're not top light heavyweights. Yeah. I mean, I think Shogun's still just as good. It's just the competition is completely different, and the injuries add up. And he's still a great fighter. It's just he can't beat the top five of the light heavyweight division, which isn't a bad thing. I agree. Yeah, you do. I think if you go back and look at all all of his finishes, all of his wins are finishes in the UFC. I mean, Dana White has to love that, right? <laughs> all of his wins are, are they finishes. All finishes. Really? They are. Uh, yes. He has like six or seven now. I don't know. That's amazing. Yes, he six wins by TKO. Yep. When he wins, he wins like with spectacular fashion. Yeah, and, you know, also, he must have been questioning things as well. So it's got to be tough going into a fight with the mindset of, okay, i got to win this because if I don't win it, they're going to pressure me to retire or they're going to pressure me to move down and wait. Got to be That's got to be an extra burden when you're going into the octagon to fight, knowing that you've got that hanging over your head. I don't think it's fair that Dana – well, I get – I don't know. Did Dana say that? Yeah. Dana said, Dana said, uh, if if he loses, I'd be interested in seeing him at 185. That's what he said. Yeah. Well, I don't think that's fair to say before a fight, because a fighter is trying to be focused on the fight, stuff like that. Yeah. When to someone fair, says to them, it adds a burden and more pressure to them. So what happens with him now? Because that pretty much saves him. Wasn't that two in a row that he lost or something? Um, yeah, for to Gustafson and uh, Chelsea. Um. Well, I don't know what he does now. Like he's fought the majority of the light heavyweight division. I guess if um, Glover loses against Jones, we do Glover versus Shogun. I think that would be a war. I agree. How about a fight with Phil Davis? Oh yeah, I completely forgot he was a fighter. <laughs> <laughs> he like he sort of takes breaks if you notice. Like he kind of gets off of the map for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I completely forgot about him. Yeah, he went from supposedly fighting. Uh, John Jones next to sitting in the background. Well, he shouldn't fight with John Jones next. He what? He beat Wagner Prado. Or well, I'm saying it? a while back when they were going, "Oh, John Jones has beat everybody. There's nobody for." Oh, him. That has, that, if you think about it, that's probably ha that has to be the fight he, he's going to fight next. He was supposed to. He was supposed to fight Jones a while ago. No, Davis. Yeah, uh, Davis was supposed to fight Jones a while ago. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. I, I guess he's the only one that's on a win streak. But in terms of deserving it, not, I, I don't know, not so much. And I Davis, think you just beat Machida's kind of. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, kind of. I mean, are you going to give him a tile shot off? Kind of. He beat Machida in Brazil, though. Come on. Yeah, but then a lot of people said that he lost. So I, I Machida wasn't personally. I know what you mean. 
Yeah, I I don't understand. Rex paper, it, it says it says a win, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I guess that's all that matters is on paper, but if you're trying to sell a co-main event, it's just like, oh, the guy beat Lai Umashida, kind of beat him, against John Jones, the world champions, like, really? <laughs> Come on. So what happens to, to Huna now? That's two in a row that he's lost. He'll go back to back fighting the Joey Belchans of the world. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> he probably will, though. I mean, he's not a top light heavyweight, and... They'll keep him around because he's, what, he's New Zealand, Australian? Oh. Yeah, so, I don't really know who he fights. Maybe fight Bader? After the win that Bader just had? Well, it wasn't impressive, so... You can fight a guy like Thiago Silva, you know? Like, there's still fun fights for him. A couple I fun fights. I think he was supposed to fight Thiago Silva at some point. So, yeah, that I think that would be good. Any more comments on that one? Um, Shogun is not back. Let's not everyone jump to conclusion. He looked good and everything. He's like, lose one, win one, lose one, win one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So he's not back. Let's all calm down about that one. Yeah, let's wait until there's at least two or three in a row. <laughs> yeah, because what was it? John Anko came for and was like, oh, Shogun's back. Yeah, uh, I, I noticed that too. <laughs> let, let, calm down a little bit. <laughs> Okay, recapping that one. Mauricio Shogun Hua wins by knockout by punch at 103 in round one. I love that punch. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> All right, moving on. Ryan Bader versus Anthony Paroche. Comments? Um, the first round was good. After that, I didn't really enjoy it because Paroche just kind of fell down. I mean, does he not have wrestling? Or... I mean, I'm not sure whether or not he wanted it to be on his back because he is a jiu-jitsu guy but he didn't really do anything from his back and he kind of just fell over for the takedowns yeah no, so, I, was, uh, I was making a comment last night i'm looking at the guy i was like jesus christ you know this fucking fella needs to do something anything you know even if it's fucking wrong so we know he's in the fight yeah i mean i'm not saying i could do better but i can i can do better i'm just you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard uh, Anik or Florian say that that uh, Parosh asked for Vinny, and then he asked for Bader too, and they they just fed him both both of the ones he wanted. But I guess uh, he he couldn't be Bader. I think he was like the oh. first um, one of the first Brazilian Jiu Jitsu black belts in uh, Australia. Yeah. Or I am Lion. I don't know. I think he was one of the first though. So. I'll back up your lie. <laughs> But, um, I mean, he can't really do much now, because he he's didn't 42. look good. Yeah, he's 42. He didn't look good. So, like, what does he do? I'm going to be surprised if they cut him. Yeah, if he if he retires, I think that'd be best. Just to save the whole, oh, I got cut from the UFC. It's like, no, I retired. <laughs> so. But a lot of, most of them, it's all they know, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean... He can go to uh, opening up his own... He probably does have his own grappling school and stuff like that. And he can just compete in grappling competitions. So, I mean, hopefully he can do that. As for Bader, I'm not really too sure where he goes. Cause... I don't think they cut Perosh. I think they give him one more chance. I think he deserves one more chance because Ryan Bader isn't exactly a bad fighter. Mm. He's not top of the food chain either, but... He beats major not majority, but a lot of the light heavyweight guys. Yeah, normally, I mean, Parush goes out there and he's you know looking to mix it up, but he just didn't get a chance in that fight. He was just smothered from the get go. Yeah. And Bader does what? That's what I'm trying to think of. I'm not too sure because, I mean, <laughs> every time he's he's had a step up in competition, he's lost. Yeah, he's de he, yeah, he's definitely one of these guys that uh that has already fought most of the top, you know, in the light heavyweight. Uh, well, we're speaking about Phil Davis, and we're not too sure who he should fight. Maybe oh, yeah, that's fight. a good fight. There you go. Yeah. Give him Bader until... Glover that's a fight a lot of people have always been talking about, huh, kind of? Yeah, yeah, it, I, I think that'd be a good fight. I mean, it'd showcase whether or not who has the better wrestling. And plus, Bader's kind of still a big name. They've so always Davis, been in the top ten for a while now. Yeah, so Davis can get a title shot, or Bader can get a title shot off that. Probably won't, but he could. It's nice to see uh, Gust, uh, Glover and Jones set for uh, 171, right? I'm not excited about that one, but 
And I am. Because I love Glover, but then deep down I'm just like, man, he's not going to win. I just don't see him winning at all. Yeah, and it seems like Jones is comfortable just to keep putting things off and uh, kind of making me start to wonder, are we ever going to see the rematch with Gustafson? If Gustafson beats um, Jimmy Manua, we'll definitely see it. Dana right. will play a huge part in that. We'll, we'll definitely see it. Yeah. Any other comments on that one? Total nope. domination by Ryan Bader. Yeah, that was. Ryan Bader wins by unanimous decision, 30-27, 30-27, and 30-26. I think I also scored at 30-26 live. Uh, moving on to the next one, Pat Barry versus Soa Pelele. <laughs> the fight we talked you out of. You fucking guys <laughs> made me change my mind. <laughs> That's because um, Pat Barry should have won. Yeah. I mean, maybe the whole internet and majority of MMA fans rank him too high, but I don't know. I really like him because he's, he's such a funny guy. He's very charismatic, and he's got good striking, obviously, and he's easily marketable. It's just... I love Pat Barry, dude. He's, he's, a, yeah. nice, he's, a, he's a good MMA character, you know? He's like one of these guys that has always been funny. I think he's done. Did you guys see his face after the fight was over, man? He was not happy, yeah. and... He was already saying that he was going to retire after his last loss, but he came back, so... He's a know. very emotional guy. He puts everything into fighting, but sadly, he's just not there at the moment, which 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 sucks. I mean, he's a great fighter, but he's lacking the ground game, and he doesn't have the best of chins. But then, saying that against a heavyweight, I mean, that's not necessarily a bad thing whatsoever. Yeah. And Silly Pelele, him taking him down and then getting him to mount and just knocking Pat Barry out. I didn't think that would happen, but you know, I figured Pelele would hit a few shots and then Barry would like grapple him and defend, but it didn't happen. And I was very upset to see Barry get knocked out again. I think that's the fourth time for Barry. Yeah, my comment before that fight when we did the predictions, you know, I was thinking in my head, I saw this guy so a fight again after that dreadful bout that we were speaking about, and I could have swore that the guy was doing better in the next fight that he had, so that was more of like a premonition than a prediction for me. <laughs> then I let you guys yeah. sway me and go, oh, no, definitely. And I went by Pat, Pat Berry by Kale and won. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you look at the guys Pelele has uh, lost to, as well, he's got like he was in the UFC before. He's fought against Eddie Sanchez, and people actually thought Eddie Sanchez was a pretty decent fighter. So I guess that at that time, not a bad loss. Then got he lost to Daniel Cormier. There's no shame in that whatsoever. And then he lost to some Japanese guy in Pride. So I mean, he does. That's early on in his career, the Eddie Sanchez and the Japanese guy. So he's not necessarily a bad fighter, it's just he had a terrible debut for whatever reason. Yeah, that was dreadful. Yeah, that, yeah. That, when, I, when you guys reminded me of that, I, you know, like I said, I thought he had another fight after that, but when I saw that fight, I was like, what the fuck are these two guys doing fighting in the UFC? <laughs> and that guy's getting a second chance against uh, Walt Harris. Is he? Yeah. Um, a lot of people dislike that fight. I like it, though, because Walt Harris deserved the second chance because I thought he looked good. And Krylov. I like Krylov's uh, submission attempts, personally. Yeah, they that were... That was but, sloppy, but I like the fact that he was going for heel hooks and all this other stuff. Yeah, it was good. It was... I mean, uh, from that, that was good. But, I'm, you know, UFC debut, who cares? I mean, if you look shit in UFC debut, it's probably jitters. You're probably just getting into the mindset, and, you know, it's just not there yep. for you. Any more comments on Pat Berry versus Soa Pelele? I think he's going to go to kickboxing, maybe. I would agree with that, and hopefully Glory signs him and not K1. Although I don't dislike K1. Glory, I think. Well, I don't like K1, it's just their talent isn't as good as Glory now. Glory took everything from them, except Krokop. Or did Kro I Actually, no, I think Krokop just signed with Glory, so that's a huge mistake for Krokop. <laughs> okay, rounding out that one there, Soa Pelele wins by knockout due to punches at 209 in round one. 
Uh, fight number five, Dylan Andrews versus Clint Hester. Comments on that one? It was a very sad ending. It would dislocate its um, shoulder. That sucks for Dylan Andrews because not only was it in Australia, but Andrews came back from his last fight when he had a broken arm and knocked the guy out. So obviously he's got the heart and it wasn't just, oh no, I get my ass kicked, I, I'm just going to give up. It was not that at all. He was genuinely injured and it sucks to see a fight end like that. Yeah, that was nasty too, the way it popped out. Yeah, it was pretty gross. So that happened when he was actually throwing a punch and then it was blocked by Hester and then as he blocked the punch you could see his shoulder shoot up and out of the socket. Yeah, that's... It's very sickening. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah, was, <laughs> well, I just thought that was weird. It's, yeah, it's, and they were both it, like out grappling each other, so it was a good, it was a good bout. Yeah, it was a nice even fight, and I, I thought they both looked good. Like Clint Hester and Dylan Andrews, they both looked good. Whether or not they can uh, fight, maybe the, like the top twenty or top fifteen guys at middleweight, that's another story. But it was an entertaining fight. It was quite the even fight. So to see it end by a freak injury, that sucks. Yeah. I know Clint Hester was not happy to win like that because you could tell from his face. He was just like, shit. Yeah. Who did you have winning the fight up until that point, though? I think Hester was taking over, yeah. But you get the feeling that if a healthy Andrews would have taken over, too. Yeah. yeah. I think I had Andrews winning one round and then Hester winning the other round. I think that's what I had as well. So I think it was even for me. And I honestly think if it went to the third, Andrews would have won. All right, so what happens next for Hester? Um, give him someone who's in the top 20, top 25. Like, give him an actual fighter. Like, I'm not saying Dean Andrews isn't a fighter, but he was he was a tough fighter from the Ultimate Fighter. So give him someone who's actually in the middleweight division, and that'd be good. I think, uh, like, a fight with uh, Derek Brunson, maybe? Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, a lot of people weren't happy about that matchup, being that it was uh, two tough guys from the same season fighting on a, a main event, I mean, a main card like that. Yeah, I, I was telling you guys earlier, like, I think they do it to see, like, okay, let's see which guy we're eventually going to end up having to cut from that season. You know, that's how maybe they see it like that. Because I see these matchups all the time like they're always matching up former cast members former you know okay recapping that one Clint Hester wins by TKO due to injury at five minutes in round two Andrew suffered a dislocated shoulder and was unable to continue in round three all right fight number six Beth Cohia versus Julie Kedzi comments um it was sad Julie got wrong. I'm just kidding <laughs> it, was, it was sad to see her lose again again another person who pioneered the sport of women's MMA she was always gaming pretty much all of her fights and it's sad to see her lose again but um I mean she's retired now yeah she retired after the fights I think if she would have won she probably would have stayed in for another fight yeah you know, she was on she was on a, you know a bit of a losing streak and not really performing all that well from what I've seen of late but uh I don't know, she, I think she, it was expected. She reminds me of Carl Uno. Every time I saw him fight, he'd lose. I, I've i never seen him win. <laughs> and that's the same with Julie Kedzie. I've never seen her win a fight. So, I don't know, it's just weird for me. And it sucks for her. Obviously, she's retired now. At least she got two cracks at it, right? Like, she could say that she fought in the UFC. Yep. Yeah, I actually expected uh, Kohia to actually put more pressure on her. I wasn't expecting the fight to unfold the way that it actually did. I thought it was going to be more pressure from Cahia, and then Kenzie wouldn't be able to deal with that, because she typically doesn't deal well with that when she's smothered like that. But uh, pretty much it worked out. I actually had Kenzie winning. How did you guys score it? Um, I, yeah, scored it for, uh, one. I, I scored it for Korea, so... Oh, you did? Yeah, not by much. I mean, I, it was a close fight, but I, I scored it for Korea. Yeah, I don't remember what rounds I scored what, but I remember I did have a 2-1 to one for Kedzie. I wasn't shocked by the decision. Yeah, I wasn't either. Same. Any more comments on that one? It wasn't a bad fight. Just fuck what everyone's saying. 
I don't believe there's been a bad women's fight in the UFC yet. And call me a nut hugger for women's MMA. I don't care. There hasn't been a single bad women's MMA fight in the UFC yet. I would okay. agree with that. Okay, I'm going to call you both nut huggers then because I saw <laughs> I saw a couple of fucking stinkers. Hey, we just love don't women. like grappling. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we we love women. What can we say? I love women too. I really love watching them fight because they bring it. But man, a couple of women just uh, seems like you know within the last few fights that we've seen with the women, there's you know a couple of women that just are there going through the motions. And in, in my opinion, but what the fuck do I know? I'm I'm just a yeah. fan, not a fighter. Yeah. What the fuck do you know? Like she just said, Pat Singano comes back. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to see that, man. Yeah. Like, um, sugar when she turns, comes back, sugar turned me into a fan of hers. Oh, yeah, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> See, you should have been a fan of her. She's hot. She can fight. My perfect woman. Okay. Recapping that one. Beth Cohia wins by split decision 29-28, 28-29, and 29-28. Okay. Mizugaki versus Nam Pham. That was a great fight. That was everything I expected it to be. Yep. Um, the 30 28 from the judges? What the fuck? That was an exciting <laughs> fight. Yeah. For the main event, it would have got a fight on the night, probably. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with that as well. Which is what I chose for it to be fight the night as well. But Hunt and the Bigfoot showed up. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, Mizugaki looked good. That's four in a row for him now. So I'd like to see him take up an, uh, another step up in competition. I don't know if I'd have him fight, though. I think uh, fighting TJ Dillashaw would be a good fight. Cause, although, it's, I guess, it's not a step up. I think up. he's going to fight Mike Easton. Mike Easton. Yeah, it's going to be Dillashaw versus Mike Easton. Oh. Well, then the winner of that fights Mizugaki. Because, yep. I, I mean, they're both great fighters. And Mizugaki fighting Easton or Dillashaw would both be a great fight. So, I'd like to see that. How did you guys score it? Scored it 29-28 for Mizugaki. Yeah, I, I, same here. I had Mizugaki winning most rounds. Yeah, I think I scored it 30-27. I don't recall, but I didn't see uh, Nam Pham in there at, at any point. I doubt Nam's going to get cut, though, because he brings such exciting fights. Yeah. The thing is with that is if you look at his record in the UFC, he's 2-5. and five. Yeah. He beat Cole Miller, though, and he Cole Miller's on a streak. Yeah, but that was a split decision, I like, Pretty sure uh, a lot of people thought Cole Miller won that fight. Yeah, I remember that one. So, I mean, it, I don't want him to get cut because he's an exciting fighter and he's only lost to good guys. I mean, he's Mike there. Brown, Jimmy Hayes, uh, Dan Silver, now fucking Mizugaki. He's lost to great fighters. It's just he's not getting the wins that he needs. True. Okay, any other comments on that one? It's a great fight. And that's it. <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed the hell out of it. Okay, the weight got... division. Say it again. Featherweight division is always awesome. Oh, this is a bantamweight. Nam fan. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's yeah. a bantamweight, too. <laughs> okay, recapping that one. Mizugaki wins by unanimous decision. 30-27, 30-27, and 30-28. Okay, now moving further down. Which undercard fights do you guys want to speak about? I want to talk about Justin Scoggins. He's got... I like his last name. I think it's hilarious. And he's a flyweight that got a TKO finish in round one. Yeah. And he looks super impressive. Like. Yeah, I like the karate stance. Yeah, he looked really good. And I can't wait to see what kind of impact he makes in the flyweight division. I mean, he's 8-0. He's finished all but one of his fights. So, yeah. I'm just... I'm just for those impressed. who are listening that don't know, Justin Scoggins won that one by TKO in round one. Yeah, he looked super impressive. I mean, his grappling looked good. His striking looked crisp. I'm just, I'm excited to see him in the UFC. Yeah, this is the guy that, that Alex was telling us about, right? Yep. Yeah, the guy who um, got a head kick finish in round five of a, of a title fight. So he's got the cardio there. And he's a former champion. I mean, lower leagues, obviously, but... I mean, he can, he's proven he can go into round five and he can finish a fight. What did you pick on that one, Sugar? Uh, I'll be honest, and I'll, I completely guessed on that one. I went with the other guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what I did was I didn't know some of these guys, so I just went out and I looked at what some of the uh, odds makers were saying and then some of the other journalists, uh, what their opinion was on things. And, uh, man, I was way off on this one. Last time I went and I was 10-2 and two when I used that method. I very rarely use my own method of picking fighters because... I get too emotionally involved, and I start thinking with my heart rather than my head. Yeah, this time around, I kind of just winged it. I think I chose um, Scoggins to win. Yeah, you went with uh, Scoggins by TK on one. You got 10 points in that one. Yeah, I was right. 
Well, he should fight that Josh Shapo, the guy that just missed weight on t Tough 18 finale. They're both 1 0. Which guy is that? Josh Shapo. He just fought, uh, he was overweight, and oh, right, the other yeah. guy got 100,000 for fight of the night. Yeah, that must have hurt, huh? Oh, yeah, for being two pounds over, and he decided not to try to cut the weight, I guess. Wow. Okay, let's move on. Uh, recapping that one, Justin Scoggins wins by TKO in round one due to punches at 443. Uh, what other fight you want to talk about, guys? Well, I think we could talk about how impressive Alex Garcia was in his welterweight um, UFC debut. I mean, I thought he was going to get the submission because his last few fights have been decision uh, submissions. Sorry, but um, he got the knockout and he looked good. He looked really good. Yeah, and, I thought... yeah, he's got ten finishes as well. Like, holy fuck! Yeah, I thought the same as you. I mean, I didn't know who the guy was, but I went out and I looked, and the odds makers had him as a huge favorite. And then everything I was reading by journalists and fans, they were all saying uh, Garcia was going to win no problem by submission. So that's why I went with submission. Yeah, same. I mean, I went with submission for the same reasons and because Alex told me to. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, Alex was saying he uh, he was guaranteeing that one was going to be a rear naked choke finish in round one. Yeah, you were wrong, Alex. You were wrong. <laughs> that means he owes us all brownies the next time we get together and do a show. And they bear the magic ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was pretty impressive, huh? I don't think anybody was uh, predicting a KO like that at 43 seconds, but damn. Well, I mean, he, he trains at TriStar, so that's a nice gym to be training at. Well, yeah, how I did you call general... that one, Sugar? I had him by submission. <laughs> hey, what'd you say? So did everyone. Yeah, everyone did. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's a general consent now. If you train at TriStar, you're probably a good fighter. <laughs> so, <laughs> I actually remember seeing him in a UFC special. Like they, he came out talking. I remember because I remember him training with TriStar. This was like six months ago too. I guess it was probably for Roy McDonald then. Could be. Uh... Okay. Any other comments on that, or do we want to speak about any other fight? I think we're pretty much done with the event as a whole. Okay. All right, let's talk about the of-the-night bonuses. Mark Hunt and Antonio Silva win fight of the night honors, and <laughs> not only was it fight of the night, but most likely contender for fight of the year, and some are actually even saying probably the best heavyweight fight ever in the UFC. What do you guys think? I 100% agree. I mean, <laughs> that was a fantastic fight, especially for heavyweights. Heavyweights are not really known for exciting fights for whatever reasons. But this year, it's completely changing it. I mean, Cain Velasquez, Dos Santos, now we've got Mark Hunt and Antonio Silva. I mean, both great fights. They were amazing fights. So Yeah, I, I agree that uh, the heavyweights are bringing it. And uh, I think both of those fight of the night bonuses and the KO of the night are des really deservingly so because Shogun Hula brought it too. Yeah, I kind of felt that it was a bummer that, like I said earlier, man, I was... It would have been perfect if the night would have been topped off with a winner in that fight. But It's interesting it, how there was no submission, so they didn't give a, an award for that. <laughs> yeah, but they doubled up the... Uh, Did they? Yeah, they doubled up the uh, the winnings for uh, Mark Hunt and Antonio Silva. They both were awarded fight of the night and an extra 50000 each, I believe. So they both got 100000 Yeah, bonus. Said, BFW said during the post-fight press conference that they were both going to get paid their win bonuses, so maybe even more than that extra 50. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad they got that huge bonus, though. I mean, that's, that's they great. definitely, yeah, they definitely deserved it. Yeah, like I said, I would I would have loved it if there was a winner, but even though there was no clear-cut winner, it was a great fight, no doubt about that. I know it was an exciting fight, because during the fight, I was screaming, Marku Hantu! <laughs> <laughs> and it was like 3 a.m., <laughs> Okay, and like we said, there was no submission of the night because there was no submission. And knockout of the night went to Shogun Hua for that impressive, what was that, a left-hand cross? Oh, yeah. Damn, right on the jaw. Boom. Caught him reaching. Dropped to Hua like a brick wall, man. That was unbelievable. Any other comments on that stuff, guys? Great nope. event. Yeah, it was a pretty great event. On a scale of 1 to 10, how did you rate it? For a fight night, it was amazing. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> um... I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10, and the the main event and co-main event, 10 out of 10. They were perfect, perfect. Yeah, I'll go with the 8 out of 10. I'm usually more generous than you guys, but apparently you guys are big fans of Hunt. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I guess if I was a massive fan of Hunt, I might have uh, given another point or so. All right, any other comments on that, guys? Not on the event itself, no. Okay, we're at the end of the show at the final thoughts segment. Any final thoughts? Well, um, I saw tweeted uh, yesterday that Front Row Brian has tweeted that Matt Brown is injured and out of his fight with Carlos Condit. Bummer. Now, it's Front Row Brian. <laughs> He's been right a few times, but from what I've seen majority of the time, he isn't right. And it's just a tweet. So it could be completely wrong. But if it's right, who do you see? what do you see happening? Like, you know what I find silly and, and humorous is that one fight ago, everybody was ridiculing Matt Brown for not deserving, you know, a, a shot or a top ten guy and this and that. And now all of a sudden, they're, everyone's saying, okay, yeah, one shot away, and he deserves a shot at the title. <laughs> I just was, right, um, Robbie Lawler has a perfect option for uh, Carlos Condit, so kudos to you for choosing that. <laughs> but um, the whole... The fans towards Matt Brown, they can go suck a dick. I was calling for Matt Brown to fight a top guy after his last win, and I was called a fucking idiot. Yeah, and I don't understand that, because, man, the guy, what, was that six, seven in a row? Yeah, like, I think it was six in a row, and they were all finishes. Yeah. And I was called fucking stupid for saying, oh, yeah, one more win, he's going to get tired yeah, of shots. all the people that were saying he's stupid, they were going, oh, yeah, man, he's exactly. actually beats fucking Condit, you know, he definitely deserves a shot at the title. It's like, well... It where the exactly. fuck did that come from? It's, it's just... I'm telling you, right? I, I'm just going to say this now. MMA fans are becoming the absolute worst. I know I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for saying that. But seriously, I mean... They're too focused on rankings. They change their mind all the time. They're fucking bipolar, for fuck's sake. <laughs> and when you, when you, whenever you're like in a forum or something like that... And you write something... They'll either not read it... Or they'll misinterpret it, or they'll just even go a complete opposite way and then say, "Oh, that's what you meant." So it's like, no, bitch, I meant what I wrote. This is uh, MMA fans are becoming the fucking worst, and I really, really don't want it to go down like that. Yeah, cause... man, I've had a couple of MMA fans ah. kind of get under my skin too. It's like, you know, some of the forums out there, you post a fucking video, and then somebody will come back and, "Dude, man, is that a fucking spoiler?" Well, it's not a fucking spoiler unless you watch the fucking video. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, MMA fans will turn into boxing fans. That's what I'm starting to think, and I really don't see that happen. Like, obviously, it's just the vocal minority, so it's actually not the majority at all. It's just the vocal minority. Mm. But it's just, it's still frustrating to see fans hate on fighters. As, as, like, GSP, perfect case. Everyone loved him. Joy Hendricks fight, now everyone hates him. And now people are even hating Joey Hendricks as well. Which, like, what the fuck? Fighters cannot win when it comes to their fans recently. I and know, I think call, be calling Johnny Hendricks a crybaby, I don't understand that. Yeah, I mean, I don't yeah. get that either, man. I mean, the guy was in the biggest fight of his life, where everybody, including GSP's mother, knew that he won that fucking fight. Of course he's going to be a fucking crybaby. Yeah. He just lost the, a title that the majority thought he won. Even the biggest Dana fight of his won. career. And yeah. in, in, in his interviews, he's just like, he's chill. He's like, I'm good. I know I beat him. He's not crying yeah. exactly. Well, like, I'm he's fucking not tired of hearing this guy bitch and complain enough. Come on. Give the man I, a I mean, he's the one getting asked for interviews every single day ever since the fight. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, but um, the whole, oh, I was going to go 70%. Well, that's your fault. <laughs> that's that's not something to hate on him either. I mean, that's just the way he fought, so he can conserve his energy for the fifth round, and it worked. I mean, ah, how did you guys score that one? I had I had Hendricks winning that one. Um, at the time, I think I had uh, GSP winning, and I think I've gone back and I watched it, and I had Hendricks winning. Yeah. So for me, it's the complete opposite because people were saying. They saw Hendricks win at the time, and they went back to watch it, and GSP won. Yeah. But for me, it's the exact opposite. Yeah, I saw a lot of people say that same thing, but to me, I, I give GSP two rounds at best in that one. So I had Hendricks winning that one as well. What about, what about you? you? Uh, yeah. Um, I had him GSP two and five. I mean, uh, three and five for sure. And I remember watching it, thinking in the first round of Hendricks won in round one, but now that I rewatch it, I could see how some judges gave GSP the first round. 
It's just one of those like super close fights. Yeah, that seems to be the round that's in question. Where some people are questioning the fifth round. It's like, well, what the fuck did that have to do with anything? Yeah, that was GSP's round. What the fuck did that have to do with anything? The fifth round wasn't in question. It was the first round that is the one that's the issue. Yeah. What was the scoring in that one? Either one of you guys know in the first round? Uh, I think two judges gave it to GSP. Yeah, ten nine. Hmm. That was the difference maker that round. Yeah, I didn't see it that way. And then what I'm thinking is like, what if these judges sitting cage side have inside their minds to to beat the champ, you have to beat the champ. And what if they're thinking after a close round, round one, they're like, oh, GSP. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. I don't, I hate when people say that because I don't subscribe to that. It's a fucking fight. Two guys in the fucking cage, they're doing their thing. It doesn't matter if you're the champ or not. Two men fucking fighting. If one man won that round, the other guy shouldn't get brownie points because he's the champion. Yeah, I mean, with that same mindset, if they want to see to beat the man, you got to beat the man. Okay, so I'm assuming they mean finish the guy, right? That's what it sounds like. Okay, so why does... What, let's just get rid of uh, rounds. Let's get rid of time limits. Let's go back to the dark ages of MMA then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what the fuck? Do they want MMA to, like, go backwards? Like, yeah. come on. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know. I, I just think, like, after a close round like that, like, what if they're thinking, like, oh, what do I pick? GSP. Well, he's the champ. It, it's, it was a close round. I'm picking GSP. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand the mindset, so I guess I can't really blame the judges for it. But then, like, the fans afterwards, again, me shitting on MMA fans, but <laughs> them saying that, dude, you're MMA fans. We're meant to know more than the judges. That's just what we're meant to do. Exactly. But if you're saying that, you're Well, they won't get pissed at you because I give them an affectionate name. I call them professional MMA fans. <laughs> I don't. I call them MMA fans. That's what they are. They ain't no professionals. <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a little bit of uh, satire in there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's like you know they, they have an opinion on MMA and they think it's fucking the all end all you know solution for MMA and they're yeah. going to change the world of MMA with their opinions it's like fuck man you're one voice in how many tens of millions you know yeah and then, just like us we're one voice shit we're saying probably means fuck all to you but I mean we're allowed opinion just like you guys are I just think you're wrong <laughs> 100% wrong <laughs> okay any other comments any other off topic things guys well um the ufc are raising the prices by five dollars for um ufc 168 which i am perfectly fine with it's a huge event it's to compare it to WWE. i know you don't like this rich but to compare it to that it's like their wrestlemania it's a huge event so the prices should go up yeah it's like the world cup like this is the this is yeah. the big one if anything, yeah, exactly. for the year. For a great, have... It's been a great year, and this yeah. is their big one. Well, that's they how capitalism have... works, you know? Supply and demand. Yeah, this should be... I'm saying this should be three to four events that should be more expensive because they should be the huge ones for the UFC. They should be. I mean, if they're going to have a bad pay-per-view and it's the same price, who cares? It's the same price because... Just don't pay for it then. I mean, it's no one's forcing you to buy these. Like, they're really not. If you don't want to buy a certain pay-per-view, don't buy it. But it, don't complain either when they raise prices on what's their huge event. It makes sense from a business standpoint. And if a, if a casual fan sees, oh, this is more expensive, I mean, this fight, this must be prestigious. It must be a huge event for them. It, it just makes them care about the event a lot more. It's not... The UFC raising all of the prices and stuff like that. There's no fucking conspiracy with Dana wants more money. He, I mean... They already announced it's only a one-time, right? Exactly. One time. The people saying, oh, it's not just one time, it's going to turn into like, oh, it'll be like all the time now, they're going to like three fucking ones, like huge prices and then one bad. Shut the fuck up. It's one time. Read the article. <laughs> Read the article, motherfucker. Yeah, read. Reading skills. And comprehension. Uh, <laughs> I think the off-topic section has been me ranting about fans. <laughs> Maybe I'm not an MMA fan now. Who knows? Maybe you're a professional MMA fan. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe I'm just a dick. <laughs> All right, People. so uh, one more time there, Julia Kedzie. 
retires from MMA after that loss last night. It sucks for her. She's pioneered women's MMA, and I will certainly miss her in MMA because she's usually exciting. Yeah, and it's a shame. I know Michelle Watterson was really excited about her coming to the UFC, but unfortunately it didn't pan out for her. So uh, what do you think? She goes back to strictly uh, the broadcast booth over at Invicta? If that's what she enjoys doing and she's good enough at it, yeah, I don't see why not. I think she should stay involved in women's MMA anyway, any way she can. Yeah, that's kind of a dangerous move for her because I don't know about you guys, but I'm still thinking that uh, UFC is eventually going to scoop them up. I mean, they're adding the 115-pound women's division, and although uh, Shane yeah, Trapp is saying it's, it's a good thing, good you know, that's got to be a cause of concern for them over there because what women are going to want to fight in the 115 and 135-pound division in Victor if they could go to UFC? Yeah, and I hope it doesn't happen. Because um, like, I don't watch much Invicta at all as much as I should. I mean, I used to, and I just stopped for whatever reason. But my brother's super excited for it, all the Invicta events, and he, he loves the shows. They're, like, super exciting. And not only that, they've got a solid fan base because of that. And then they've got... It's a way for women's fighters to climb up the ranks. Yeah, but I think what's I think what's going to strangle that organization is the fact that they're a pay-per-view model. And yeah, granted they don't charge a lot for their pay-per-view, but probably not the best way to be a startup MMA organization. Yeah, I guess it's not the best because they're doing it on the internet, aren't they? Yeah. And, and digital media is the way to go in the future, I fully believe. But at the moment. Not so much, so hopefully they can get a TV deal. That would be ideal for them, and that might save them as an independent organization, but I don't think that's going to happen because we're already seeing the women defect to the UFC. I I see Invicta kind of like a season of tough with just women's fighters. It's it's how they climb up to reach the UFC. It's great for them, so I really hope Invicta sticks around. And it's an event tonight, so... Go yeah, watch it. Well, they're on pay-per-view, bitches. That's FC, uh, Invicta FC7, right? Yeah. I thought Michelle Watterson was supposed to defend her belt in that one, but I guess that fight was postponed. I think she got injured, something like that. Did she? I think. I'm not entirely sure, but I think she got injured. Yeah, back when we interviewed her, she said uh, she was expecting to fight in October, or around October. I think that's what she said. Well, that sucks, because she's pretty hot. Yeah. <laughs> She's one of my favorite female fighters. Oh yeah. <laughs> Any comments, Sugar, on that stuff? Uh, one of my favorite female fighters out of Invicta is Veronica Rothenhausler. Yeah, I was dying to see her fight, man, and I missed that fight. She got injured with the weight where she collapsed or something. Yeah, and I didn't see her on this card, so I'm wondering what's up with her. Yeah, I hope she's not having medical problems from that. Well, that's the thing. She's cutting down to 145 and she's having problems, so... Yeah. They're talking about a women's lightweight division, aren't they? Where? In the UFC? I don't think so. No, no, no. In Victor. That'd be good to see. Okay. Recapping our picks. Mark Hunt versus Antonio Silva. Hired Merck. Went Hunt with KO in round two. Zero points. Alex Hunt. KO in round one, zero points. Rich, Silver by Southern, two, zero points. And Sugar, Hunt, KO in round one for zero points. All right, that fight, as we all know, was uh, declared a majority draw, 48-47 Hunt, and 47-47 by two other judges. Mauricio Shogun Hua versus James Tahuna, hired Merck. Hua by decision, four points. Alex Tahuna by unanimous decision, zero points. Rich Davey, Tahuna by KO, TKO, and two, zero points. Sugar, Hua by decision, four points. And Mauricio Shogun Hua won that one by knockout at 103 in round one. Moving on to Ryan Bader versus Anthony Peroche. Hired Merck, Bader by KO, TKO in round one, four points. Bader by KO, TKO in round one for Alex. Four points for him. Rich Davey, Bader by KO, TKO in two. Four points for me. And Sugar, Bader by KO or TKO in round one. Four points for him. And Ryan Bader won the unanimous decision there. 30-27, 30-27, and 30-26. Pat Barry versus Soa Pulele. Hired Merck had Barry by KO in one. Zero points. Alex, Barry by KO in one. Zero points. 
Rich Davy, Barry by K11 or TK11, zero points. And Sugar, Barry by K12, zero points. Solo Pelele, one by knockout due to punches at 209 in round one. Dylan Andrews versus Clint Hester, hired Merck, had Andrews by KO or TKO in two, zero points. Alex, KO, TKO in two for Andrews, zero points. Rich Davy, same thing, zero points. And Sugar had Andrews by decision, zero points. And in that one, Clint Hester won by TKO due to injury of five minutes in round two, where Andrews suffered a dislocated shoulder and was an unable to continue for the third round. Okay, and then we move on to the ladies. Okay, Beth Cohia <laughs> versus Julie Kedzie. Merck, Cohia by decision, 10 points. Alex, the same thing. Me, the same thing. And Sugar went with Julie Kedzie by decision, 0 points. Moving on to the next one. Mizugaki versus Nam Fung. Uh, Mizugaki for Merck by decision, 10 points. Alex went with Mizugaki by TKO in two, 4 points. Rich by decision for Mizugaki, 10 points. And the same for Sugar. Mizugaki by decision, 10 points. And Mizugaki won that one by unanimous decision, 30-27, 30-27, and 30-28. Okay, this next one here. Uh, I'm not sure how you pronounce this fellow's name. Kayo Magalharas versus Nick Ring. Merck had Ring by decision, 0 points. Alex had Michael Harris by sub and two, four points. Rich had ring by decision, zero points. And Sugar went with Michael Harris by decision, ten points. And of course he won that bout, uh, Michael Harris by Oh, unanimous decision 29-28, 29-28, 29-28. Then we have Justin Scoggins versus Richie Vakulik. Merck went with Scoggins by KO, TKO, one for ten points. Uh, so did... Alex, 10 points for him. I went with KO, TKO, and 2, 7 points. And Sugar went with Richie Vakulik by decision, 0 points. Justin Scoggins uh, won that one by TKO in round 1 due to punches at 4.43. Okay, Christoph Jotko versus Bruno Santos. Uh, Merck went with Santos by decision, 0 points. Alex went with Jotko by, de uh, by decision, 10 points. Rich went with Sanchez, uh, Santos by decision, 0 and Sugar went with Santos by sub and two, zero. And in that one, Christoph Jotko wins by unanimous decision, 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27. And finally, the last one, Alex Garcia versus Ben Wall. Mark went with Garcia by sub and one, seven points. Alex went with Garcia by sub and one, seven points. Rich went with Garcia by sub and two, four points. And Sugar went with Garcia sub by in one by uh, in one for seven points. Okay, and of course, Alex Garcia won by KO due to punches at 43 seconds in round one. I think we're at the end of the show, fellas. Been a, I've enjoyed it a lot. So for me, it's been a good one. Yep. Yeah, thanks for having me on, guys. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm glad you guys showed up. As always, I'll always show up. And I was hoping to have Blue and, uh, and Alex here as well, but both of them were busy today, so. All right, now is the time to say goodbye, fellas. If you want to say goodbye to anybody, do it now. Goodbye, people that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> goodbye. Thanks for tuning in. All right, we'll talk to you next time, guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>